previously on Between the Blue Lines. Remember the feeling of coming up short, okay? So don't feel sorry for yourself. We're having a big week this week. Last episode, we got an inside look at the coaching staff and team chaplains for the Knights prior to them hitting the road towards Hershey, Pennsylvania. After late game heroics by Evan Hoey, the Knights fell to LVC in overtime. Blackwood looks, shoots, scores! Although gaining a crucial point, the Knights need to dig deeper in the last stretch of games in the regular season. Not in my house. That was cool, I'll give you that. That's the pass. Get to the paint tonight. Go for it, Hatsy. There he is. Come on. Skate, skate, skate. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. It's a good shot. Crouch, you're going. Let's go. Middle, middle. Here we go. Got a middle shake for you. Hey, make sure you guys got head on the swivel, all right? Hey, that's a real good shift, you three. Real good shift. Nice job, Rick. Forwards, let's be hungry for that puck. Big time play by you. Got to get a tie up here. Let's go. Let's be buzzing around offensively. In the dog days of a 25-game season, it is important to understand the severity of each game. With such a short season, a losing streak such as this one feels longer than it actually is and could be detrimental to postseason hopes. In a lull of sports, what goes wrong does not always stay wrong. Eventually, tides turn and the ship sails in a more prominent direction. But in these times, it is important to lean on the veteran leadership in the program to ensure that everything stays on course. Kyle and Nate, they're two great leaders. I mean, like I said, Kyle in the beginning of the year, he came off right away, at making sure everybody was bonding. Um, Nate, local guy, you know, he was a great leader. He came up from Iceworks, I think Delaware Ducks, Little Flyers, Ridley High School, to Newman captain. I mean, that's like Delco Hall of Fame right there. So I think they're two great guys and two, two guys that people look up to. and. You know, they get, did a good job for the boys to get connected before the start of the season. Yeah, for sure. And I'd say the same type of stuff. And uh, I've always known Pants. Um, he always skated with in the summers. I actually know him as shorts previously because he's got an older brother. And um, But he actually was one of the first guys to reach out to me about coming to Newman. And, uh, you know, he really did take me under his wing this year. And uh, him and Nate, I think, uh, are two great guys, and Nate. Nate is the uh, the subtle presence in the room that just has that uh, that good voice, and he's always got the right thing to say. So, it's been a tremendous honor. I mean, when you look down at the history of Newman men's ice hockey, you know there's been a lot of great players that have come through here. This is a program that's won a national championship, so to kind of hold that into my realm and you know kind of take a step back and you know really appreciate. Uh, being captain and it's a tremendous honor to wear that C upon my chest there. They set the standard, so to speak, um, what they want out of you as a player um, every day at the rink, off the ice too, like being down in the gym after practice. They're both great examples of, you know, what it takes to uh, be successful at this level. So um, both vocal and, you know, non-vocal leaders, um, they're always working hard. Every time they're on the ice, you know, practicing a game, you're gonna see them working, so. Beyond inside the ring, the most influential aspect of forming a cohesive unit is the ability to ban 31 individuals from various different backgrounds and demographics. Team bonding has an ability to subside the wounds of defeat and keep minds fresh in and out of the locker room. Yeah, you're almost kinda, um, the way I looked at it, you're like handed 30 friends right off the bat. They welcomed me, you know, in with open arms. Everyone, everyone's been really cool. Made some of my better friends already here. Been really close, especially with my roommates. You know, I never really had a bad time when I was on the ice with the boys. Uh, off the ice too, we've had a great time. And then once I was able to uh, get into the locker room, it was a fantastic group of guys. Uh, I couldn't say enough great things about um, the guys on the team. Uh, the, everyone loves to hang out with each other. Uh, we'll go out for waters and stretching and just enjoy yourselves. And um, I think it's been honestly everything I could ask for when uh, playing junior hockey and trying to achieve an education through hockey. I, I couldn't have asked for a better uh, place to call home. There's definitely different personalities on this team. There are a couple of guys that are quite characters, but I think that's what makes us, you know, a whole team here. We, we have the entertainment factors through guys like Barry Needler, Zach Thompson, or, you know, you never know what guys are going to come in the locker room, say to do today. 
But when it comes down to it and we're ready to work, I think we really get the job done and we have good practices together and we have some fun off the ice too. With the final home stretch of the year on the forefront, there is no better time to kick the sails in the right direction. To keep things light, the guys take to an Italian favorite, a pizza night. A night like tonight is a time to unwind from the strenuous schedule of balancing school and athletics. With Arcadia up next, the guys utilize the simplicity of this evening to gear up for another upcoming battle. In the final home games of the year, it's a battle of the Knights in Aston, Pennsylvania, with envisions of finally putting losing ways to bed. It will be all nights from the start, Newman that is, quickly going up 2-1 in the first with goals by Dexton Moselle and Nick Martino. About three minutes after Newman takes the lead, P.J. Demetrio joins the scoring parade after netting his first ever collegiate goal off a shorthanded chance. Pasquale Demetrio, the freshman from Sewell, picks up his first of the season. It is the unlikeliest of goal scorers when hard-nosed defenseman Makita Volaboyev joins the rush to score Newman's fifth goal less than a minute into the second period. Oh, beautiful setup for Makita Volaboyev! Arcadia offers a slight pushback, but Evan Hoey remains red hot and squanders any thought of the visitors' comeback. Evan Hoey continues his hot streak! The home team ensures the job is not finished, and when the puck makes its way back up to the neutral zone, it is the captain, Nate Dunning, stepping up to force the puck back where it came from. After a smart defensive play by Luke Croucher, he gets his third point of the night by feeding Dunning in the slot. He finishes it off for his fifth of the season. The onslaught continues. After a failed clearing attempt by Arcadia, Dylan Manchester finds Northeast Philadelphia's very own Barry Needler on the back door, proving that persistence does pay off as his five-game goal is streak is now shattered. Barry Needler able to find his own rebound. As the final buzzer sounds, the Knights greet sophomore goaltender Cal Ambrose as he picks up his third win of the season and snaps the team's five-game losing streak. Final score, eight to three. It is important to take notice of victory, and with that comes the team's celebratory tradition of in-game awards. The hard hat represents the player who put his head down and worked all game long, while the rope symbolizes the player that pulled the weight of success in the right direction for a full 60 minutes. Perhaps it's no more fitting than tonight's recipients, one celebrating a night of first, while the other makes his way back onto the scoring column with a four point night. We played smart hockey, uh, we competed, we played hard. We had good decision making, okay? Bench was very good. Good chatter, good talk from you guys, and look, that's what it takes to close out games. Feels good to get back on track. After speeches conclude, one final ritual takes place front and center in capturing the joys and the excitement of winning. One of the pinnacles of being an NCAA athlete is celebrating the senior class. It's the final time these athletes will represent their university at home, and maybe even themselves as hockey players. After one last warm-up, the Knights celebrate these six individuals on the ice with their families, who for the past four years have put nothing but hard work and dedication into the program. Tonight is a time to look back on the past while still looking ahead to what the future has to offer. In a unique way, a bittersweet sentiment is created through this moment. On the road and looking to beat Newman for the first time in program history, Chatham wants to spoil the night's senior night, as they light the lamp twice in the second period after a scoreless first. Holding, firing, shooting, score! With the third beginning on a fresh sheet of ice, the youth of the team knows to dig deeper for a group of guys that it means so much more to. Less than three minutes in, freshman to sophomore combo Nick Martino and Brady Missler link up to cut the deficit in half. Beautiful two-man game! Nick Martino got it inside!
And late in the third, with time winding down, it is yet another youth movement, providing veteran-like heroics. Looking for someone in the slot, but good defense by Chatham to recover. Martino, he wants it, does it, he scores! What a play by Martino! Right on cue! He finds the back left of the net, and it's now all knotted up! Chatham starting to see ghosts! As the third comes to an end, with the game tied, the stage is set for overtime. Trap along the corner, three, two, one, and we're going to overtime again. Senior night, three on three overtime, foreshadowing playoff hockey. A dramatic finish awaits. 24 seconds into the overtime period, Luke Croucher gets called for a questionable holding penalty, giving the visitors a four-on-three advantage, seemingly sealing the game's fate. The penalty kill, with every last breath that they have, successfully fights off a desperate Chatham power play. And after a block by Dunning, the puck pops out to Brusco, who finds a wide open Luke Croucher fresh out of the penalty box. He plays it up! Game on his stick! Croucher! Shoot! He scores! Fresh out of the penalty box is Luke Croucher, and he's mobbed! Newman does it again! I got out of the ice. I Threw a leg kick. I knew I was going low glove, so I went low glove, and then the rest was kind of history. The boys kind of jumped all over me, and it was a good time. The rest of the night was, uh, you know, a huge party. So <laughs> that's uh, that's all I kind of got to say. It was uh, it was good, and I'm glad uh, we kind of worked it out for the seniors in that night. I think it was a bigger night for our seniors than anything. After making the pass, I might have blacked out. Like I don't even know. Like I was just going insane and jumping around and hugging everybody that was possible to hug. So. It's just great, like a great feeling to be there with your teammates and a win like that on senior night is nothing but the best. A win on a night like tonight is that much more special. You guys battle back for that one. You earn those points tonight. We're growing as a team, guys. Feel it, we're growing as a team and it's at the right time. Fittingly, Luke Croucher is awarded the hard hat. But uh, this one's pretty obvious, I gotta give it to Crouch. As the whole senior class is gifted the rope. Uh, picture perfect here for these guys, seniors, you guys got the rope, you guys lead the way, so here you go. Making a memory that will be everlasting. Game puck here, 31, no doubt, Kyle Pamela. Yeah. Seniors, everything you guys have done, all right, you have paved the way. With the team finding their stride at the right time, the playoffs are just a few weeks away. My biggest pet peeve is being late, so I uh, definitely hate being late. My biggest pet peeve is probably when someone chews with their mouth open. Probably people like being too dirty, 
like roommates specifically. Maybe uh, people putting their dishes away, maybe. Now that I live in a college house, I know what it's like when uh, my mom would always rave to me, um, not putting the dishes away. Now I know how it feels, so. Probably when you say good morning to someone and they don't say good morning back.